Thanks very much, and thanks very much for coming along to this uh, presentation. Um, a few little notes taken here, where I'll refer to, and then I can put this down. Um, I want to take you on a journey before we delve into what coengineers.io is. I want to, I want you to imagine yourself back in two thousand and seven, and you're a computer genius, and you managed to blag your way into a meeting with senior decision makers and and financial managers of one of the biggest banks in the world. And your pitch goes something like this. And you say, hi, my name is Satoshi Nakamoto. That's not my real name, but that's how I want you to know me. And what I've done is I've invented a new method of, um, sorry, just bear with me. One second. This is complex, so I want to get this right, okay? I've invented a, a new method of, of a value transaction process. Uh, it's a computer program that digitally initiates and records the value transaction. It uses cryptography to secure the transaction. It makes the transaction transparent to the actors, uh, but uh, to the actors involved, but anonymous to everybody else. To make the ledger database even more secure, what I propose to do is to give everybody a copy of the trans transaction ledger, uh, so it becomes a distributed database. These transactions will become immutable irreversible and trustless uh, in a system that becomes a single source of truth. So I'm going to give you an incentive uh, to get people to maintain this ledger so that you don't have to do it. I'm going to invent a currency and the currency I'm going to call it Bitcoin. And uh, you will get a reward for the work that you do in maintaining the ledger uh, by gathering up these transactions and putting them into a file cabinet. I'm going to call that cabinet a block. And uh, there will be a new block created every 10 minutes, so you'll all get a chance to earn Bitcoin. The value of the Bitcoin will be the value that you put upon it. Um, it'll bring you closer to your client, because what it's going to do is, is that it's going to disintermediate the process, so you'll be able to dispense with layers and layers of middle management. Your client will get more insight and get closer control of the process of his value. I suggest that if you put that in front of these people at the meeting, your feet will not touch the ground as you're escorted from the building between the shoulders of two burly security men. And as your backside hits the pavement outside, up in the meeting, uh, the executives will admire your chutzpah, but they'll have a good laugh at your expense. Except you will have the last laugh because 12 months later, the bank will have gone bankrupt and all of those executives will find themselves on the pavement. And this actually happened in 2008. Now that meeting never happened, but I always love to imagine that meeting happening because something else happened as a result of that. You come out and you decide, what am I going to do? I'm going to release a white paper on my hypothesis, on my proposal, and put it up on a forum that is mainly used by computer geeks. But one or two people read this paper and they have some knowledge and they realize that what you've done is you've solved a problem. You solved a problem that was, uh, that made other attempts at a cryptocurrency fail and you've managed to solve the problem and they become interested and they contact you. So a couple of months later, you actually send them the computer application, uh, the first iteration of the Bitcoin blockchain and they start to play around with it and the rest is history as we know. So, what we can take out of that is, is, is two lessons, two important lessons. One, that in order to succeed, Bitcoin had to create a separate economy outside of the norm. And the second, and probably most important thing is, is that it has proven that the blockchain works. So we come to BIM and blockchain. And uh, my journey into blockchain started about three years ago, three or four years ago. I'm researching for a PhD. And my PhD is based around the human dynamics uh, that are arising, uh, being forced down uh, into the profession through the use of collaborative BIM technologies. And um, as I started to look into this a little bit more, something became very evident and I think has become even more evident over the last number of years is that BIM has kind of plateaued. We've gone as far as level two, and I think we've got quite comfortable in terms of our level two BIM. Uh, we know it's not perfect, but we're comfortable because we still own the data. 
and we are happy to lend that data out in order to do these class detections and move the project along a little bit, but we're still comfortable in terms of perhaps one of the problems that still arise there. And you can look back at the rise of BIM using the quite reliable uh, NBS uh, BIM survey, which has been carried out over the last number of years, and you can see the steady rise. But the last indication is that we're roughly at 70%. And uh, that's alarming to me, considering that there's been a BIM mandate for the last number of years, and, and that there's still 30%. And can you imagine the value of that economy still not using this process that we know is obviously a great process and it's our best solution in terms of the problems that we have in terms of design and construction at this moment in time. So, um, what's the problem? Well, the problem to me is trust. And it's trust because we're basically humans and but we operate in a business that does not necessarily promote trust. So about four years ago, I read an article, I came across, I started to research, was there any mechanisms out there that would promote trust in our business? And I read an article in The Economist called Blockchain, the Trust Machine. And that set me off on my journey. I stood on the edge of the rabbit hole and I dived in and I've not come out since. Uh, so blockchain is, in, uh, 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 is, sorry, BIM is complex, blockchain is complex. But I started to see that there were synergies between the two. And that really started to intrigue me. You know, your, your BIM model is basically a database. So what you're actually doing is that you're programming a database. And one could actually say that perhaps a, a BIM model is a whole series of collections of smart contracts. And um, when you start to combine that database, that BIM database, with the database that is, is blockchain, some very interesting synergies start to happen. Um, I presented this hypothesis, I suppose you could call it, at the BIM Show Live in 2016, and I refined this a little bit more um, in uh, 2017, around this time last year, where I presented the BIM and blockchain paper at, uh, at the gathering here. Now, BIM is interesting because it was originally invented uh, to produce a more coordinated set of 2D information. And um, as as it started to gather momentum and gather pace and become more sophisticated, then um, an added value network started to build up around the BIM. So we started to use the model for energy modeling, for measurement, for, um, uh, for programming. Uh, we started to use the model as a container of data and information. And this whole new um, network, this value network started to emerge around this BIM and, uh, and starts to become very interesting. So I want you to keep that one in mind. As a result of that, um, I um, uh, contacted a, an engineer called Dan Robles. Dan is based in Seattle. And Dan is a really good futurist. He's a real forward thinker and has, he put it together from his perspective as being an engineer that blockchain held huge potential for engineers. So I invited Dan to uh, co-author the paper with me and I started to form this collaboration with Dan. Um, as a result of that, um, and some uh, other network connections that we had, and these are all connections, these are people that are based all over the world, and we communicate via um, a gamers app called Discord, believe it or not, but it's suitable to our purposes. Uh, we formed a, 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 an organization called the IEBC, which is the Integrated Engineering Blockchain Consortium. And uh, there are some fantastically smart people in around this who all see the potential that blockchain has and that how it can bring, uh, that what it can bring to our design construction industry. But Dan specifically was looking at this towards the engineers. So, uh, Co-Engineers is a project that has arisen from the IEBC. And it's a project to measure engineering value into existence. Why? Well, engineering knowledge and creativity suffers from a condition called invisibility. Would you agree? The value that you create um, is, is, is almost invisible to the people who actually go and use it. So what? The development testing, what is it? The development testing and application of a native blockchain called coengineers.io. And that is a validation platform for a decentralized body of knowledge for engineers where intangible value can be articulated by a digital token. So who is it? We are the IEBC and our project is coengineers.io. When is it happening? Well, it's happening now. There's an alpha chain um, in development. It's in beta version. 
It is a blockchain. Anybody here familiar with Steemit? Okay, so it's a Steemit clone based on the um, coding that Steemit runs on. Steemit is a peer-to-peer -peer publishing um, digital uh, blockchain. And um, how, so the co, the co engineers proposes to use a delegated proof of stake, which is basically uh, peer review. Now, peer review has been around a long time. The majority of academic knowledge that we have in the world is produced and validated through peer review. So the IABC fosters engineering use cases of blockchain technology, and we seek to answer the question, how can en the engineering professional, profession uh, apply a decentralized ledger technology for certification, collaboration, coordination among many engineering disciplines? And this is it. It's co-engineers. It's the first blockchain developed for engineers by engineers. The creation of wealth. How can we measure into existence new wealth, this invisible intri intrinsic knowledge that engineers have through a blockchain? Um, Co-engineers will be a publishing platform for engineers at length. Uh, Co-engineers measures the true impact of engineers upon the economy, society and the environment. The fundamental building block of co-engineers is a network of claims and validations related to the physical state of the world expressed as a function of time and space. Um, our goal is to reduce the systemic risk in the world. IBC is a global consortium of integrated engineering innovations applied to the sustainability of worthy en enterprise. And IABC uses the coengineers.io blockchain for decentralized research and development of novel applications. So, what problems can this uh, um, coengineers.io take on? Well, providing global connectivity. Um, and you, you, you need to step outside the kind of small boundaries in terms of Ireland and, uh, and the UK and the EU that we operate in. Uh, this is deriving from the United States as well and uh, has branches both in Japan and in Canada and in Australia. So we're, we're talking about a global connectivity here. Managing and developing talent, a supporting strategy and growth of business, driving innovation and enhancing project delivery excellence. So the solution that we're proposing is a blockchain-based community of practice, uh, professional mobility and identification and development of talent. Why blockchain? Well, multiple writers, a rich data uh, uh, engineering uh, data lake, division of responsibility, very much network-based, very little hierarchy in terms of the makeup of the organization, Adaptability, security, adjudication, which is this idea of, of peer review and a chronological time. Um, some of you might be familiar with that diagram. Uh, it is a, if you like, a, a clone of the diagram that uh, the um, developer of Uber at a meeting sat down to explain to some investors what Uber was and he developed this system of Increase market uh, value, more entrance produces a good, increases token awards. So you get this continuous cycle of, of increased uh, value. Um, Co-engineers Co proposes uh, as, as its incentive to have a two token system. Uh, why tokens? Because they're programmable compensation and incentives for cont contributors. They measure true value into existence. That's really important. They amplify curation of continuous improvement. Again, that idea of the miners in Bitcoin. A kind of cash that eliminates uh, initial capitalization. So not having to look for huge wads of money in order to get, get this started. The two token system is a measurement of value. Um, it's an asset tracker. It's a unit of account. Consequently, a storage of value. Uh, a dynamic international and a quantitative uh, analysis uh, ability as well. So a non-trivial proof of work, how it's going to work, is that you as an engineer will make a claim. It could be your credentials, it could be a piece of micro work, it could be a formula, it could be an algorithm, something like that. And you publish this onto uh, the co-engineer's uh, blockchain and ask for validation of that. Uh, so other engineers or other people, other makers will come back 
investigate that, peer review it, and if they feel it's correct, they will validate that. So the claimant will get a token called mass, and the validator gets a token called gravity. Claimant receives mass tokens, validator receives gravity, proportional to the amount of stake held by the claimant and the validator. And this is this uh, idea of proof of stake as opposed to proof of work, which is how the Bitcoin um, miners work. Which use those vast amounts of energy that we can't really afford to do anymore. And the validators uh, claims will populate what we've termed an IBOC. So we're starting to build up this wealth of engineering uh, information, which becomes accessible to both engineers, but it starts to become accessible to people who need engineering knowledge. And those people will be typically insurers on financial institutions. Uh, the engineering token will have intrinsic value. So there's a market opportunity here. There's uh, an opportunity for a front row seat in the development of this tokenized ecosystem. And this building of uh, this integration of engineering knowledge and data. Um, it, as I said, it's in beta. We're starting. We're at this point where we're looking for not investors as such. We're looking for people uh, who are interested in in getting involved in this and seeing uh, um, how this can work. We've got a safe sandbox, boxed, uh, sandboxing of network corporate organisations. Uh, at the core of perhaps some future operations as well. First time access to new world data set of knowledge, first time application of artificial intelligence. So what we're saying is that as this um, IBOC develops and more and more knowledge starts to come into it, it'll be, um, uh, and I refer back to kind of big data. Big data is something that a lot of people talk about. The real secret of big data is the person who can draw clarity from the big data. and. Uh, that is a skill probably um, of artificial intelligence that might be coming down the line at some point along the way. I would suggest that it is. Knowledge asset management, networked uh, knowledge asset management for frictionless liquidity of engineering and architectural talent. So it's, a, it's an engineering blockchain built by engineers for engineers. I think it's for makers and doers. That's, that's what I think this is for as well. And participation in the incubator and innovation exchange to allow employees to engage in the culture of a leading edge tech company. So getting your employees involved in this is, is possible uh, to do this as well. Um, I think uh, this is going to be one of the uh, uh, value networks that's going to happen, deriving from the injection of blockchain into the design and construction industry uh, is a way, um, is, is this disruption of hierarchy and the introduction of network. And I think we're all pretty much uh, on the same page in terms of we operate on a collaborative, you know, our, our BIM technologies are collaborative. That's what they're there to do. You're not using these technologies correctly uh, if you're not collaborating. Collaborating is, collaboration is uh, best carried out in terms of a network scenario as opposed to a hierarchical scenario. So what's going to happen here is a direct challenge to hierarchy, which means it's a direct challenge to how we organize our, our businesses and our firms uh, at this moment in time. And one of the things that you cannot do um, in terms of the hierarchy is, is bring in a whole new system because the hierarchy and the firm will tip over. So there's got to be a graduated uh, introduction of, 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 of network into a firm in order to, uh, to help this change over, in order to make your firm business, your, your business better, leaner, and, uh, and more open to, uh, to other people that are in the industry. So a way for engineering knowledge firms to predictably disrupt itself from the very foundations in a way that comes only along only once in a century. Asset management for frictionless liquidity of engineering and architectural talent. Um, the, I don't know if this will work or not now, but we have a um, substantial amount of information. That was probably a, 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 a poor explanation of what we're doing. It's a complex uh, system. Um, but there is tons of information out there if you are interested in, in getting involved. Uh, we have uh, two websites, the ivc.co website and the coengineers.io website. Um, this is backed by um, uh, academic papers, by um, proposals, by what we term to be moonshots, um, things that we, can, we feel we can apply this new blockchain to. And, um, and it's, it's different. It's probably not what you expected um, out of a blockchain, but 
in the same way that this new value network developed in around uh, the BIM technologies, I think you're going to see a new value network develop around blockchain. So it's going to be start. It's going to start to uh, be applied in areas that perhaps you don't even know is going to be applied in as yet. Um, I'm often asked the question, when is this going to happen? And that's that is a difficult question because uh, I refer back to BIM. It's pretty obvious that BIM is uh, is is a fantastic way to, uh, and our best solution in terms of going about our business at the moment. But we're, we're only still at a seventy percent adoption. And now we want to drop a whole new system in on top of that. You know, the design and construction industry is not known for its innovative and we are basically laggards in terms of a digital transformation. It is happening, it's happening slowly. We know it needs to happen quicker and faster and better. Um, what effect can blockchain have? I think personally that it could be the secret sauce. It could be the magic ingredient which will allow us to develop um, these trusting relationships, these relationships which we find difficult, but um, if we start, if I talk about the BIM model as a single source of truth, okay, so that there's a baseline there in terms of a single source of truth, applying a blockchain to that, which makes, us, makes that information uh, irreversible and immutable, we start to enter into a very new ground. Blockchain is basically network-based as well, so all of these synergies are starting to happen and if we want to get out of this funk i believe that we're in in terms of bin level two and proceed to bin level three well perhaps it is a an engineering or an aec blockchain that might deliver or propel us into that and if I two more hours i talk for two more hours <laughs> but i don't but all the resources are there and i presume uh, these will be available to people and by all means you're invited to get involved in what I think is a really exciting project. Thanks very much. Um, thanks very much to, to Maliki. And I might ask um, Greg, uh, Colin and Andrew to, to join us. We might just come up the front here and take any questions that have arisen from the two sessions. Okay, over here. Um, do we have microphones? No, you're okay. No. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Thanks for very interesting questions for uh, Malik. Uh, I'm combining Rob Thompson from a company called Site Passports, yes. construction technology company. And uh, we've been lucky enough to work in with PAT and UCD Cedar developing a, a blockchain application yeah. for the construction industry. I have to say, your, your, your talk was fascinating. Your white paper is excellent. I really would recommend everybody to read Malik's paper about uh, blockchain and BIM, but also. It touched on the hierarchical nature of construction, which I think has to be changed uh, for BIM to work and everything else. You know, yeah. and it's very interesting though you talk about BIM and blockchain together and where they're going. And on the Gartner cycle at the moment in blockchain, we're in this trough of disillusionment. You know, it was going to pop before Christmas and then I think BIM is in the trough of disillusionment a bit as well. Yeah. I'm not sure about the seventy percent adoption. Yeah. You know, I think it's a lot less than that across companies. But I'm hoping that the uh, blockchain and BIM might drag each other out of uh, the or, Blockchain might drive them out of that trough as well, and so you know it's it's a fascinating area. Yeah, I I I, I absolutely agree. With you. I think it has that potential. There's no doubt about it. One of the reasons I I did the little preamble in terms of Bitcoin, and one of the interesting things I I I would have derived from Bitcoin is that it would have perhaps gone to the establishment. The establishment would have said, "You must be joking. We're not touching that." Yeah, so. And the funny thing is now, 10 years later, the establishment are falling over themselves. Those major banks are falling over themselves to, to try and uh, build blockchain solutions to their own processes here at the moment. But in order for that to survive and to become accepted in uh, the very um, substantial traditional financial systems, it had to start outside of that system. And I wonder, I wonder, is that something that we need to do? Do we need to start something to get an informed client and an informed set of professionals who are prepared to say, I'm not doing it the way it's been done before. We're going to do it this way and we're going to do it in a more efficient, a more networked uh, way and, uh, and it's all for one, one for all. Where we'll take the reward but we'll all take the risk as well. And our current system is so convoluted and so driven in terms of contractual and legislative 
difficulties that I don't think we're ever going to change it the way it is at the moment. And that's why we fall into this funk of com comfortable BIM level two. Yes, yes. And looking at BIM level three as something pie in the sky. But I think it can happen. And I think um, having that idea of a, of, a, of a single source of truth could be the driver for that, plus that change of mindset that's required. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So just one last thing, I suppose, that it's all about collaboration. Unless people come together, blockchain is about bringing people together. It has to be inclusive and all those sort of things. I suppose just a bit of a shout out that we're, we've just recently founded the Construction Blockchain Consortium, which is the Irish chapter of the UK. Yeah. And we're just opening up to everybody. We're going to have our first uh, meet up in January. Uh, so if anybody wants to, you know, we, I think we should collaborate together, but it is trying to open up to a broader group of people in construction, from engineers to subcontractors to suppliers. The consultants, clients, and all that. So, if anybody's interested in joining the Construction Blockchain Consortium in Ireland, um, you can email me, you know, to the right. rob.fox at sitepassport.ie. Okay. But uh, I think hopefully, with the start of something fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything, our, our things will only work in this sector if we break down the silos. So, we have to collaborate, we have to communicate. Uh, do you want to get in there? Yeah, uh, you just talk about BIM um, as being in a funk at the moment. And I, I did. Yeah, I can understand why you're saying that because whenever you say BIM to certainly the people I meet on the ground, you know, they do glaze over. So, the, the whole idea, even within our organization, we talk about digital construction now, you know, and we, we target particular areas now. And we don't talk in terms of overall, this is a BIM process. It's about digital construction and about the tools that we can use to improve. The process and, and, and I just you know that's one thing I would say to anyone that's talking about BIM maybe to start eliminating that word now I think okay. we've we've used it along yeah, enough. Yeah. I think definitely the narrative needs to change. The language yeah. The message because people do play over BIM. It's yeah. Relevant to small to medium sized companies. So. But yeah, it's, and you it's do. Not the heart of it though. Yeah. No. Change, change the name. Still the problem. Still lies. Well, no, absolutely. Lies there. But it'd be a start. Yeah. BIM is just morphing the conversation about digital construction. Yeah. And construction technology. And this, this is it, I think, within, within BAM Ireland, we have recognised that and we are, you know, we are talking about digital construction now. Right? Yeah. Yes, uh, thank gentlemen. you very much. My question on BAM team, um, looking at the advancement you've done in technology, laser scanning, Autodex, BIM, mobile technologies and the rest, just to increase efficiency, performance and productivity. But the construction industry, the way it is, it is integrated socially. You have subcontractors, suppliers working. What is the disposition of the suppliers and your supply chains in adopting these technologies? I think Greg or someone yeah. talked about so, training. Yeah. So what is their disposition? Are they investing in it or is BAM investing in them? Yeah. What there's, is there's, a, there's a little bit of both. Um, we have to recognize the whole industry isn't at a level that we would be at and people don't really need to be so we're trying to bring people include people in the process but not trying to bring them to the same level so they have to do things to solve their problems or our needs and uh, we will give training where we need to and andrew would provide that to all subcontractors that need a little bit of training but you see some of the the larger subcontractors mercury and joneses they're brought into the process brought into the bsi pipe mark and and understand the process. And over the last four or five years I've been working with BAM, I've gradually seen the conversation simplify. And when I say something, it's understood straight away. In the last two years, things have changed with the main subcontractors, main subcontractors and it's slowly getting better and understanding. So it's going to be a period of time, a transition period, uh, that we will be able to have you know, a similar conversation on a, on a, a level with a lower rank subcontractor. But um, yeah, so it's definitely progressed over the last uh, number of years. And on, and on that, you can you can take a walk down the aisle there, and you'll see a lot of vendors that are simplifying it. You know, in terms of people's access. You know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, putting information in, uh, and and so that we can all access it. And one of the things that I had to uh, jump over quite quickly is this whole idea of dashboarding. You know, and getting that information back out to people as well. So it's a, it's a it's about getting it in easily and getting it out and letting all the technology work in the background. Yes, and uh, in the issue of trust, what is the situation now? Uh, the subcontractors willing to give you the necessary information to get very good models? Well, uh, so that, that's tied into the contracts. It, it, it's, it's usually mandated uh, through the EIR as part of the, the, the contracts. There's a deliverable there. 
And as when we when we are bringing on our subcontractors, that's just part of the, 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 the contract. So. And obviously, um, as as uh, digitalization uh, matures, subcontractors know if they want to engage, if they want business from the likes of BAM, um, and the the leading contractors out there, they have to speak in their language. And SMEs are adopting every day of the week in order to to learn that language. Okay. Any other questions? So, uh, so, so hi folks. My name is Killian. I'm working with Blockchain Lab. There. Just maybe some comments that I add to that. I'm doing a presentation later. But the first one is, and we've seen this across our national service and all the different sectors we've delivered blockchains in, is there's one word that's key, and that's culture. That needs to change. And in any industry you're trying to, to bring a blockchain to, another word we'd use is competition. So it's competition, collaborative competition. So yes, you're all competing, and you know, but I'm trying to take contrast of assist in whatever way it is. But you've got to just have that, be able to put that in an everything place. The second thing we found from all the industries that we're working is that the way you can tie something, a piece of innovation, to a regulation, it's a great starting point. Why? Because it's a common thing, you know, and everyone will gladly talk around the table about it, as opposed to going in and talking about contracts or subcontracting with this, that, or the other, but it's a little bit more difficult. So, just some insight, we'll be talking about it later on, but just to add to that. I, and just to answer that, I, I often get asked, what's, what is the, the, the definitive strength of the blockchain? To me, that definitive strength is its ability to influence human behavior. People wouldn't think necessarily that that's what it does, but that's what it does do. And if it does that then, is that the, as I said, secret sauce that's going to be the catalyst for this culture change that we consistently talk about? And perhaps it is, it's not, I said that quietly, but perhaps it is. It's worth investigating, it's worth researching, it's worth testing uh, from hypothesis to theory to applied. And that's happening as we speak at the moment. And I'm really looking forward to talk because these are the guys who are in the applied end. They're doing it. Okay, thank you for that, Killian. Anyone else want to get in on that? Okay, any other questions before we wrap up for lunch? No? Um, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you for your questions.